obviously bring it right down to a basic level because it's still fundamental to us, but it's something that I think everyone can do, right? Because it's, it's yes. there's a specific reason why I chose it. Because in Jiu-Jitsu, we all start like this. It's far back. Which is great for guard pullers, not great for a judo guys who want to do traditional hip style throws. It wants me to be more upright. But if my hips are back, try and do the same thing again. So, I'll leave it to you now. Um, so, what, what we're going to have to do is this row, which is going to be a little bit easier how I'm going to teach it, but this is how Caroline gets it. So, usually it's from here or just as they've got up the transition. So, she's gone from the throw, gone to the knee, yeah, so you go to the knee, and as you stand back up, the legs there for the coach going. So, it's a step in, this hand grip on the elbow brings to your elbow. And this one just rotates or pushes either or it's a, depending on the angle you have there. You can't attack a leg that's back. So if that's the case, you need to just bring it forward. Um, obviously, but as I said, the, the, how she attacks it is they've just got up so she has that leg forward all the time. And we do is step in, so foot to foot, arm to elbow, rotate, hook and pull out. Um, we're going to teach it standing up, it's just a little bit easier to get the, the rhythmatic sweep. So, standing grip, elbow, repel. You're going to just pull the hooky forward with the arm so they take that step. As they take that step, you're also going to take the step. Um, on command, the Uki's going to step back for you. So are you. On the second sweep, on the second step, you bring the Uki forward. Your foot hits the floor before theirs does. The reason why is just to make a shuffle like this. I'll show you in speed. So, so one step, you step back. The next one is a shuffle and a leg. Timing. It's really just awesome. timing, yeah. that's all it is. Um, so they've got no weight in their foot, maybe. That's the, the one, that's the one we teach um, to learn how to do Koro Chigari. Caroline attacks the Koro Chigari, which is a different thing. But you need to know how the, the suit works before you can attack it. Um, so I suggest, slightly leg part, one step back, step forward, and on the second one, little shuffle, pull forward, and it should be that light and that simple. We'll get into the arm movement a little bit more, I think we are after, I think we just need to get the, 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 the foot timing. Anyone want to see that again? Or you yeah. uh, one last thing, sorry, when you sweep the foot, the noise you're looking for is this. You're not chattering along the floor, you're making too much contact to the floor. You're also not booting the leg away. It's a sweep. So, I have to say that the, the movement is here. Try and hook the foot if you can. It's not essential because if you're doing the arm motion after, as we do, it just happens. But, so, try and arch your foot into the bottom of the foot. I think that's it. Thank you, Wayne. Okay, time up. Let's have a go. I think we're all done, so I'll join you on this one. It's called Coach Garke. Um, it's when you don't quite hit pose, so it's a gurry. So you pull the leg forward, it's already hit the floor. I've done the shuffle, but I can't, I can't hit the leg. So all you do is you'll step under the leg, pull the arm, grab the leg, and just drive through. Love it. It's just like a, it's almost like a single leg kick, I don't know, like when you're it's a, it's a weird kind of end. But you're already, you're already in that position as you found the last throw, so if you step back, you might push up and twice. Can you show the leg position very slowly? Yep. So, you've stepped in to do the sweep. We're going to abandon it straight away, you don't want to attempt. You will, I guess you can attempt the sweep and then it don't work and then step through, but try not to step inside your foot like that. 
Um, step through, try break the inside five of your knee, not too much. Go under the arm. You can even grab your own leg around the back of his uh, calf. And all you're going to do is sweep the so leg you as you're driving sweep. down. So you break your fall with your right arm as well? You, you break knees. your fall on them. <laughs> they break there. They maybe do a right hand break for you. Yes. Try not to drive your shoulder completely through them. But do you like to try So I've done this. Yeah, try that. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Step through yeah. first. If you if you just do the leg movement first. So if you stand up and just step through. So you that's it. So you're breaking the feet yeah. over the top, under. Grab the inside of your calf. Yeah, you can just so my question was, can I be guillotined from here? Can he attack my back from here? And Wayne said, not if you keep going with a secret. So Wayne's going to try and attack me from here. So I could maybe, you know, just do it as that, but you're going to be turning it off for me. Okay, so that was my only worry, but I think it's covered as long as you get a secret. Let's try it, guys. So I believe so. I don't it's one, two, three. Let's talk a bit. Tack on things that we were doing today, the judo, with straight up jiu-jitsu guard pulling to that stuff. You have to kind of have an awareness, not an expertise, but then an awareness of both aspects. So with the guard pulls, everyone guard pulls, they try and walk around, and they just push your hips in the guard pull like that. They usually put one foot on the hip. If I followed textbook rules, and I have a power instructor should teach guard pull, you would put the foot on the side that you're holding the sleeve, right? Because that's the one you can't use to get rid of that foot, whereas this one, got an arm free to get rid of it, right? But with the fake guard pull, it doesn't really matter. You want the reaction. So with the hips back stance that we're used to, we're doing that there, and then we're dropping, we're picking up. And we're just doing that. So that's one I use a lot. I like it, it's very simple, and it suits the stance where we're, that sort of back stance a lot. Even if you try and go for that one, uh, as, as say, because uh, if he's very one-legged forward, chances are, but if they are, you could just they could grab, they'll pull that back, and then you just keep the because okay. okay. you're committed to that leg. Once I drop down, <laughs> you don't want to hang around there for too long. But it's like with the previous setting with Wayne, you've got that grip, you've got at least got the surety that you can drive forward. Always maintain good stance. These techniques, when I review them, when I look at them, remind me of my days doing Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. We would have a blade, and we're doing like this and all that with our blade, but we always want to talk to good posture, because you can't be using a blade like this and not knowing where your enemy is and that. But I like to match the two together with this kind of thing. Whichever leg you want to go for, let's do the fake guard for one. See my good posture? I'm trying to maintain posture pick up. When you're going for the opposite leg one, the leg is already there. The unresponsive. <laughs> so let's try it, but there's more movement here, so watch your space. I recommend when you do the technique, the opponent that's being thrown faces, faces inwards so he's falling backwards. So if we're in our train, he would go backwards. Yes? Some of you guys are falling in, I'm just worried you're going to So just for the last 10 minutes, we'll do that, okay? Three, two, one, let's...